Welcome to part 8 of the Live Steam Charles Loco build, and welcome to my workshop and garden railway. Please like and subscribe. Moving straight on to the front cylinder covers. I started with these as I needed to see how the slide bar is going to fit on the rear covers with the nuts I'm going to use to fasten the covers to the blocks. I've got the cover fitted with four screws at the moment. This is as per the drawings. Four is plenty, but I'm going to use studs and nuts for the sake of appearance. I've just placed an order with my friend at BA Bolts in the UK. I'm using the four jaw chuck as I can get the 100mm long bar right up to the end of the spindle, so there's much shorter overhang. The bore register and outside diameter have been turned. It's 1.2 inches diameter and the register step is 50 thou. It goes right up to the start of the steam ports. I'm testing the fit of the cylinder on the register before cutting off the first cylinder cover. I'm hacksawing the piece off to save material and because the overhang is too great for a parting tool. Here's the cut halfway through to the line. The best part of the whole cut. Remember this cast piston turning jig from the Whippet project? Well it used to be a soldering mandrel and now it's going back to its former role. I do like recycling. Fluxing the mandrel before applying solder. Preheating the mandrel. I'm in the garage using the brazing hearth and sievert blowtorch. Applying solder. I'm using plumber's solder with the 80 watt electric soldering iron. The tip was pre-loaded with solder. A nice thin layer is achieved this way. Here's the iron on its stand. Applying flux to the cylinder cover. I'm using an active flux. Zinc chloride. The whole job gets a good wash afterwards. Applying solder to the cylinder cover. No preheating was required. The iron has enough power to heat the job up by itself reasonably quickly. I took the iron off to reload it with solder. Solder on iron helps the heat transfer. There was still too much solder and after joining it made its way onto the bore register. I wiped the excess solder off with a Kleenex and wire brushed with a brass bristle brush after separating and still molten. This was successful. I refluxed both parts prior to joining them. The two parts have been aligned by eye, now I'm heating them to melt the solder and join them. Here it is remelted and now cooling down. After a good washing off under a running tap and a scrubbing, it's back in the four jaw chuck. Clocking the cylinder cover. I managed to get it pretty much spot on. It doesn't really need to be. I'm trying to model this cylinder cover view. It looks like there's a screwed on aluminium disc a little proud of the main face. Here we are, finish turned with a 6BA through tapped hole for the cock. The cylinder covers have 10 fixing holes. I tried marking the holes out by manual methods, dot punching, dividers, marking out the PCD, but I wasn't keen on it and thought I'd better make a drilling jig. 
I had a suitable piece which needed very little machining, a piece of one and a half inch steel. I bored it to the cylinder bore so the cover fits in. Here's the drilling setup, the Myford dividing attachment mounted on the vertical slide. It has a 60 to 1 ratio worm and wheel drive, so each division takes six whole turns of the index crank. It's a pleasure to use the dividing attachment. I took the three jaw chuck straight off the lathe spindle and screwed it onto the dividing attachment spindle without removing the job from the chuck. The ten holes have been started with a tip of a center drill. All holes drilled through 1.8 mil, the 8BA thread tapping size. Here's the drilling setup using the always handy toolmaker's clamps. These needed switching over mid job as they cover two holes. The 10 drill tapping size holes. Some of the holes will be drilled through into the cylinder block and some will be tapped for dummy studs. The lathe is such a versatile machine tool. Whoops, I left the chuck key in the three jaw chuck. Drilling the four fixing holes into the cylinder. These were tapped 8BA afterwards. Here's the cover fitted with screws. I'll use studs and nuts eventually. Setting the second cylinder cover in the right position on the surface plate. Thanks for watching.